You've heard us talk about tax advantage investment accounts before, like tax free or tax deferred accounts. Now these are typically the investment accounts that you'll hear about because they give you tax benefits and why not take advantage of that and save some money on taxes. These tax advantage accounts like the TFSA and RRSP in Canada or the Roth IRA and 401k in the United States were created by the government to encourage people to invest and give you that little incentive or perk. Let's use a tax free account as a quick example here. For both the TFSA and Roth IRA, you can contribute money into the investment account by investments within that account and then let them grow for a number of years. Then in the future, when you sell your investments and take money out of the account to use, you don't have to pay any taxes on the income that you're getting from yourself. Now, because that's a great perk, and again, think of all the taxes you pay on your monthly income right now, not having to pay any taxes lets you keep a lot more of that money. But because of that, there's a limit to how much you can invest in this account. In 2024, those contribution limits are $7,000 for the TFSA and $7,000 for the Roth IRA if you're under 50 years old. If you're over 50, it's actually $8,000. Now, on top of those contribution limits or cap on how much money you can invest within the account, there's also rules about how long you have to keep your money invested for and what reasons you're allowed to withdraw the money for. For example, with a retirement account like the American 401k, you have to keep your money invested until a specific age. If you end up withdrawing your money earlier than that, you of course have to pay taxes on that money, but you'll also have to pay penalty fees. Another example would be the Canadian RRSP. Now, in this case, there's actually a program where you can actually withdraw money from this account to buy your first home, but if you don't remember pay the funds back into your account within 15 years, you again have to pay a penalty fee. So let's say that you max out your limits for the tax advantage investment accounts, or you know that you're gonna have to withdraw money in the shorter term and you don't wanna pay fees. How do you keep investing? There's an answer to that question and it's that there's other types of investment accounts that you can use too. They're called non-registered investment accounts or taxable investment accounts. Taxable investment accounts are investment accounts with no specific benefits or perks, and in return, you have less rules and more flexibility. You can invest an unlimited amount of money, you can withdraw your money at any time and for any reason, and you won't have to pay any penalties or fees associated with that. On the other hand, you do have to pay taxes on the income earned from your investments. Like Steph touched on before, tax-advantaged accounts typically give one or both of the following tax benefits. Tax-free, meaning you can take your money out, including the money that grew on top of your contributions, hopefully, without having to pay any taxes on this income. Tax deferred, meaning that you'll eventually pay taxes on the money that you withdraw from your account, but in the year that you contribute that money to that account, you can actually deduct that amount from your taxable income, meaning you pay less taxes now and they're deferred until the future. With a taxable account, you do pay taxes on the money that you take out of the account at any point, and you don't reduce your taxable income by putting money into the account. But again, you also have the flexibility to take out as much money as you want. You can contribute as much money as you want, and you can have multiple different taxable accounts without having to keep track of a combined limit. The other thing to keep in mind here is that registered accounts are literally registered with the government, whereas non-registered accounts aren't. It's just like your checking and savings accounts. Those aren't registered, so a taxable account is just like those accounts, whereas a tax-advantaged account is registered so that the government can make sure that you're sticking to the rules and following the limitations. The government will also update you on what your contribution room is and whether you've gone over. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the taxes you'll have to pay with the taxable account. At a high level, when you sell an investment within a taxable account for a profit, meaning that you invested in something, it grew and you made money, then you sold that investment and officially made money, that's called a capital gain. Capital gains are taxed differently depending on where you live. In Canada, 50% of any capital gains are taxable. So let's say that you sold an investment for $50, you'd have to add $25 or 50% of that to your taxable income for the year. In the US, they split capital gains into short term, which is under 365 days, and long term, which is over 365 days. Now I'm not going to go into the exact rates right now, but know that there's a difference depending on how long you hold on to the investment and that the long-term capital gains rate is lower. Also keep in mind that there's other ways to be taxed too. So the first way is like I just said, when you sell a stock, ETF, or other investment and make a profit, or when you receive an interest payment from a taxable bond or other investment. And the last way is when you receive a dividend, which is when a stock or a fund pays you out a specific amount of money every month, quarter, or year. Those three things are all you making a profit and receiving receiving money from your investments. So with the taxable account, all three ways of you making money are gonna be taxed. Now you pay these taxes at tax time when you file for the past year. So let's say that you sold a stock, made a profit in 2023, you would pay the taxes on that sale the next year when you actually go to file your taxes. Same thing with interest payments and also with dividend payments. 
Okay, so now I wanna go over how you can actually go about opening up a taxable account. And if it makes sense for you, Steph's gonna cover when that is right after this. Step number one is choosing a platform to open your account. So this could be a bank or other financial institution, a brokerage or an online platform. The biggest thing to look out for here are fees, account minimums, and other specific rules that the provider has. Sometimes there's fees just to have an account and for every investment you make, but there are low or no fee platforms out there that can save you thousands of dollars over time. Steph uses Wealth Simple Trade and there aren't any fees associated with that platform. On top of that, even though taxable accounts themselves don't have limits, the platform may implement balance minimums. So what that means is that, for example, they might say that you have to invest $1,000 or more in order to use their taxable investment account. Watch out for that. Step number two is actually opening up an account with the platform. Typically, you should be able to do this for yourself online, and depending on how user-friendly the platform is, it should be pretty quick and easy. Step number three is to fund the new account with money. This means that you deposit money into your taxable investment account that you'll then use to buy investments with. You should be able to transfer money from your checking or savings account into your investment account. Once again, hopefully you chose a platform that won't charge you for this. Step number four is to choose your investment option and start buying investments. We personally are pro passive investments across any type of investment account, so funds that track the market, but we'll link a video up top that explains that a little bit more. And that's it. After those steps, you'd have your investment account open and your investment started. Keep in mind that the process is pretty similar for opening up a tax advantaged account as well, with a few slight differences depending on the account. For our personal investment strategy, we plan on maxing out all of our tax advantage accounts before moving on to taxable investment accounts based on our timing and financial goals. Now, we both started with our TFSAs or tax-free accounts because our primary goal is investing for retirement and we're also hopefully not in our highest income earning years yet. To explain that a bit, your RRSP is most useful in the years that you're making the most money because contributing to it brings down your taxable income for that year. When you're making more money, you're also paying more taxes. So if you're able to bring down your taxable income in those years that you're making the most money, that's how you can benefit from this account the most. So with all of that being said, we wanna max out all of our years of TFSA contribution room first and then move on from there. Now, I'm actually personally at the point where my TFSA is maxed out. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing is opening up the Canadian FHSA or First Home Savings Account. Now, I can contribute $8,000 to that this year before that's maxed out, and then I'll likely be opening up an RRSP after that. Dennis is also gonna be following the same path, but he's still working on maxing out his TFSA first. Now, there is an argument to make that maybe it makes more sense to start using a taxable investment account before putting money into my RRSP if I think there's a chance I'll be earning more money per year in the future. So that's one use case for maybe using a taxable account first. As of right now, my plan is to use all of the tax advantage investment accounts, and then when I'm not allowed to contribute to them within a calendar year anymore because they're all maxed out, then I'll start using a taxable investment account, which is the second use case for taxable accounts. And I think it's most likely the most applicable to the majority of people watching this. Again, if you're in Canada, for example, you can invest all of your prior year's TFSA contribution room. And if that's maxed out, you can invest another $7,000 this year. After that, you can invest up to 18% of your past year's income into your RSP. So for example, if you made $50,000 last year, your limit would be $13,500. After that, if you're a first time home buyer, you can invest up to $8,000 into your FHSA for this year. And that's not even to mention the other registered accounts like RESPs and RDSPs if they're relevant to you. That means that you'd have to invest in this example, let's say you had a $75,000 per year salary, your TFSA is maxed up up until this point and you haven't bought your first home yet, $28,500 in a year before it would make sense for you to open up a taxable account. If me going through that example didn't make it clear, you're likely already making and investing a very high amount of money before it makes sense for you to open up and start using a taxable account, which means that it won't for the vast majority of the population. If you have any other questions about investing with a non-registered or taxable account, make sure you guys let us know down in the comment box below. And if you wanna learn more about, you know, the other Canadian tax advantaged accounts like the TFSA, RSP, RESP, or RDSP, make sure you check out this playlist next. And we'll see you guys next week with another video you already know.